Hi there, I'm Joel with Atlassian. I work on Jira and Bitbucket. Today we'll be exploring how you might use Git in your day-to-day -to, -day to experiment and track any changes. So you've been creating files, you've been changing them, and you've been committing them into your repo, and everything's going well. Now you've got an idea, and you want to run an experimentation with that idea, but you want to do it in a silo so you don't impact the main body of work until you're ready to. So let's create what's called a branch for that. If you think of your entire body of work as a tree, a branch is exactly that. It's kind of off to the side, it has all the content of the main branch, but any changes you make there aren't going to affect the main body of work. So first, let's start off by typing git branch. This will verify that we are where we think we are. And right now we'll see master. Master is kind of that main line of the branch, it's where we start. So if next we type in git checkout dash b and then type in the name of our new branch, it'll both create a new one and move us into it. We can type git branch to verify that we are where we think we are. At this point, we'll make some changes to our files. In this case, it'll just be a small change to readme.txt because that's the main file that we have in our project right now. Any changes that we've made at this point are still only in this new branch. We're still in that safe place. So let's go ahead and add that and stage it like we did before git add readme.txt. To make sure that we did what we think we did, let's try our good friend git status. Here we can see that the change has been made. Let's go ahead and commit it. git commit dash m, and we'll leave a little note here for the future. Hit enter, and to make sure we did what we think we did, we'll hit git status again. So we've made the commit like we think we did. Let's verify that we're on the branch that we thought we were one more time. Git branch, and we are. Now let's move back to the master so we can try to take that new body of work and put it into the existing project. So we'll use git checkout, which is how you switch between branches, and then master as the name of that origin branch. Now to make sure again that we are where we think we are, let's try git branch again. So we're on master, we see our other branch, let's go ahead and merge them. Git merge, experimental feature. Now it's done. And we'll do one more git status, make sure things are how we think they are. Status. And then we'll do a git log, where now we can see the combined history of the main branch as well as our new one. So I know that can seem like a lot. At the end of the day, we only used five commands. We just kind of used them again and again to make sure that we were exactly where we thought we were. We were making the changes we thought we wanted to make and we were doing them where we wanted to. This kind of repetition is really helpful down the line because it kind of always makes sure that you're, you're doing the right thing and that you're not gonna find out that you made a mistake a while back and have trouble getting to it. So what if you have a bunch of team members working on the same project? Is there some potential for conflict? Absolutely. Different team members can be working on the same file and Git has systems in place to help manage those conflicts. If one file gets a lot of modifications and in other branches it doesn't, you're going to run into some of those conflicts and we're going to detail that in a future video. Let's talk about what we've accomplished. We created a branch so we could experiment with our project without affecting other people. We merged those changes back into the master and we checked what we were doing all along the way. In the next video, let's see how we can better collaborate with those team members.